Hello everyone and welcome. We are here to unbox, surprisingly for me I guess, because it's the faction that it is, one of the more exciting expansions to Star Wars X-Wing. <laughs> For me, I'm actually surprisingly excited by this. I'm surprised how much I'm excited. You're such a turncoat these days. I know. I, I, re, I bleed. I, First, read, I bleed red. I bleed red. <laughs> I read blood. I read blood. I uh, I bleed red. No. Yeah. I mean, I did play Rebels at Worlds, I guess. But and it's Falcon, which I shouldn't be excited about at all. <laughs> at all. At all. You mean your least favorite ship in all of, in all of Star Wars? Well, not your least favorite ship, but your least favorite ship. Most hated ship. Most hated ship. Uh, There's a difference between hating and favorite. Yeah, and I mean, uh, we've gone over this a hundred times in these videos, but ultimately, uh, in every game I've ever played Star Wars, the, the YT-1300 and the Falcon are just... Good. Obnoxious. They're always way too good. In uh, every game ever. And so Which is you, fair. You lose to that It's enough, popular. You know, you just... Anyways, so we're going to be unboxing Heroes of the Resistance, which is the new box that just came out for Star Wars X-Wing. I'm very excited about it. We have some awesome characters in here, Rey and Finn and Poe. Spoiler alert, uh, if you are not already aware, <laughs> somehow. Uh, we get the alt paint scheme for, for Poe, obviously the Falcon with the upgraded dish and a, a new paint scheme, got the blue on the back, just looking real good. So we're gonna take a look at these ships, talk about them, how they interact with the game. And before we do that, before we dive in, I wanna mention our Awakened Alliance templates and tokens, part of our uh, compatible templates and tokens for Star Wars X-Wing. So if you haven't checked those out, they happen to go with these ships rather well. They're inspired by this faction, worth checking out. And they go right in there with the Rebels and the Resistance. They go right in there. You're, try you're gonna keep trying to make Ray jokes and it's just not gonna work. Anyway, so if you haven't checked this out, do so. And we're gonna dive in. We're gonna start off here with the YT-1300. A couple important things to note about this. First off, I wanna start with the dial. It is, as far as I'm aware, a, the same as the original. Yep. It just says YT-1300, so I hope so. Uh, which it's means completely different. it has all the one maneuvers, including the turn, uh, which I'm still angry Wait. about. One forward and bank are green, one turn is white. It has all the twos, the two forward is green. Uh, by all the twos, I mean standard. I guess you could have like a two sloop at this point or two K turn. All the normal uh, twos. Three forward, three bank, no three turn. Three K turn, four forward and a four K turn, and that is it, that is the dial. Seems like a good dial. It is pretty good. Uh, we also get, this is the baseline YT-1300 in this box. I know in the original expansion, the first two or three pilots, the lower pilots. It was just ones, the outer room smuggler. Had like one last attack die, a little less hole. It was a weird. It was not good. X-Wing was in the early days. And they were experimental. We didn't have standards. Anyways, so the resistance sympathizer is the baseline here. 38 points. That's a lot of points. Uh, a lot is, that, of ship. is that the missile? Is that called missile? Is that just called missile? <laughs> yes. Uh, the missile upgrade, two crew slots, of course. Three attack dice, one agility, eight hole, five shields, three pilot skill, no ability, focus, and target lock. So that's kind of the standard we're talking about here, the baseline 38 points. I think it's a pretty good 38 points as well. Like, uh, And of course, I can't forget to mention the 360 arc. Yeah, you Just get 13 a, health Yeah, and a 360 arc, three, three attack, attack dice. dice with a really good maneuver dial. It's not bad. A three and a 4K, a one turn. Uh, pretty solid. So we also get, and this is where it starts to get exciting, honestly. We get a new title for the Falcon. So the original title, is that what let it do an evade? Yes. That was it gives the, it an evade action. Zero points? One point. One point. Falcon title gives mm -hmm. it the evade action. That's it, right? It's the basis of a fat Han. Yes. Fawn. Fawn. Uh, Millennium Falcon title, the new one. So of course you can only run one or the other, and you can only run one in your list because it is unique. YT-1300 title, or only, title, one cost. After you execute a three-speed man bank maneuver, left or right, if you are not touching another ship and you are not stressed, you may receive a stress to rotate your ship 180 degrees. So I'm going to show you what that looks like really quick. Uh, you have the old Falcon here, Ray hanging out. If she has this new Falcon title, three bank, right? So you do this. As long as you didn't run into another ship, you can now take a stress. And you're not stressed. And you're not stressed, important. You can take a stress to do this. So you can do sort of like a faux sloop. Better. S loop. Actually better. A and worse. Well, better. It's just purely better. It's different. If you do an S loop and you bump, you still get stressed and you don't turn around, yeah. which is a bummer. In this case, you have the option. So depending on how the, the turn is worked out, where ships are, obviously if you bump, you don't have the option, but you wouldn't have an option with this loop anyway. And you have a 360 arc, so it's only gonna be certain positioning or certain turns yep. or certain abilities you're trying to trigger. And so <clears throat> maybe your opponent boosted or barrel rolled in a certain way or moved in a certain way that you don't need to do it. So it's optional. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. <clears throat> I think that you're right over there. <laughs> you're right. Yeah, there I could hear that you just started getting choked up. I think that the idea the, of this is just emotional for you. The the real reason why you would run this is if you have a lot of things that you care about having arc 
on. Which I, spoiler, um, we're going to see those. Like, so if you're running them. missiles on these Falcons, or if you're running... You need to be able to see them. Uh, yeah. You need to be able to see them. Or you're running Ray. Let's, yeah. Let's just or you're running Ray, or whatever. Uh, so that's Either. the title. Just keep that in mind. That is now something so, YT-1300. I will do. state two things. Do it. Give One, me a fact. Factoid. This is the first second title that we've gotten that's the same name. Okay. Which Let's I think see. is interesting. That's worth... I think it's it's cool. It's sort of like in... I played a lot of Star Wars card games, and it's always when you get like a second unique character. It's like the first time you get Vader again, and then now it's like, I have to choose between the Vaders. Yep. So it's a decision you're always going to have to make, especially if you're already spending a point on the title, yep. uh, that you, you have to choose. But they're very different. Just and I will also fun. say, this one is way more interesting. <laughs> yeah, the other one is very just flatline good. Uh, this one is... Interesting. That's the correct uh, word for that. All right. So now let's get to the pilots that are ex uh, unique and cool and exciting. Not that the other ones weren't exciting. I mean, the Resistance Sympathizer just gets me. It's pretty hype. All, all <laughs> unbothered. unbothered. <laughs> uh, all right. Next up, we have our big furry friend, Chewbacca, which means we have another YT-1300 Chewbacca. 42 points. So for four more points, we are gaining three pilot skill. We are gaining an EPT slot, which is that alone is probably <laughs> worth three or four points. Uh, Obviously. Well, without abilities, without a pilot skill. Anyways, after another friendly ship at range one to three is destroyed, but has not fled the battlefield, you may perform an attack. So, this is cool. This is, at first I thought it meant that you had to have ships at the same pilot skill to get used to this ability. No. Like it had to be that, like they've been destroyed, but they're not off the board yet. But the reality is this is a Chewbacca attack. Correct. Which, if you're a clever X-Wing player and you're sitting there thinking, are there ways that I could abuse this? There are. You want to tell me about this? You got any in your mind? I, I mean, the, I'm immediately thinking Gunner. The the biggest thing, well, Gunner says you can't perform any more attacks this round. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. RTFC. So, I need to read some cards, apparently. <laughs> All right, continue. Uh, but the that's thing that I think is the what? That's why I'm here. <laughs> yeah, you actually know what the cards are. The thing that I think is most interesting, obviously you're going to run this this version of Chewie with like some Z95s probably. I some think it's the most like... Die. Self-explanatory build or bigs. Uh, I mean, hmm. you get one shot at that point. Like it's you want a lot of things. I think you could run like three Z95s with this and then some other things, and then it's just like a fat chewy version, but with extra. And teeth. it's like if you decide to remove my Z95s, Z95s then I get free I'm attacks. Get attacks. And if you decide to remove chewy first, then good luck. Yeah, which I mean is the it's probably, probably right call, but, but um, it another that, though, another right? cool thing is that you can potentially trigger this during the movement phase. If you are able to maneuver in such a way that your Z95 runs over an asteroid, that could be and kills itself. Crazy cats. Or I mean, and in that case, Gunner would work because Gunner does this phase. I think. Imagine the upgrades that allow you to remove yourself from the game. Right. It's. Uh, I mean, I don't think they might be able to do it with uh, some upgrades we're going to see. But you have like, uh, isn't it feedback array? That's a. That's an illicit slot. It's only in this. this they're going to be a scum for the Z95s, at least right now. Right now. We'll talk. Anyways, you can imagine the upgrades that allow you to somehow damage, damage yourself, yourself and to get, get a benefit. Get the job done. I yeah. mean, I think that there's a lot of things here that are interesting. I, I don't know that this is better than the original Chewbacca. It's different. Um, it, it is very different, it is though. Different. And it's cool because you can imagine, too, what this really lets you start doing with like the Z95s, right? Mm -hmm. Is putting them in the line of fire. And not really caring. And it's like, well, if you do destroy it. Not that it, you cared before about the Z95. Yeah, because, you know, normally, like, a ship like a Z95 is going to get destroyed. Yeah. Right? Like, it's just, you know, in it's, time, it's, it's going to go. It's but the, the most dying ship in the game, I think. On the turn where you lose it, you don't lose a shot. You actually probably get a better shot, which is Chewbacca, and he might be positioned, like, in a better spot to, like, range one. Range one with a focus or whatever. Heat. So that's Chewbacca. Now, let's get to one of the two most exciting cards for me in the box, which is the Ray. Uh, pilot, I remember I saw this preview happen, and I try to avoid previews. So most of these cards I actually haven't seen until we do our unboxing, which is funny. But I, I had to look <laughs> at Ray, mm -hmm. um, and I remember trying to, um, at that point, build Ray, and it was before the rest of the box was spoiled, and I am not It was very... before we had Finn spoiled, right? Which is, I think, yeah. the biggest one. And so, anyways, I was looking, and I'm just like... I really want to make this work, and I'm not sure how. So I want to play with Ray. Yeah, so 45 but I can't points. Do it. She's three more points than Chewbacca. She gets 45 points is so many points for a ship. Almost half your list. With no upgrades. Uh, she has three extra pilot skills. So she's at eight, which is pretty solid. That's pretty salty. She has the same upgrade slots, and her ability is when attacking or defending, if the enemy ship is inside your firing arc, you may re-roll up to two of your blank results. So, so this ability is insane. 
Is it insane? It's so good. Is it's it so good? It's like, if you're good at piloting the ship, it rewards good piloting of the ship. First question, are you good at piloting the ship? Right. Hopefully, yes. The thing is, like, it really rewards high level flying of the ship. Which I love. Like, it reminds um, me, it's like the when the Shadowcaster came out, mm -hmm. right? It's like, finding ways to make this 360 arc in the ship in general reward good play yeah. instead of just, I can just always shoot you. Yeah. Anyways, go ahead. Uh, so they're, they're actually making us care about this firing arc on a 360 ship. In both ways. In both You're ways. You're caring about being in my firing arc, and I'm caring about keeping you there. I mean, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, for sure, which I think is awesome. I think that that's going to make Ray a much higher skill floor. Yeah. Like you have to be at a certain level before you're but good with it. Usually her. when the floor is higher, the ceiling's, the ceiling's higher. higher. You know what I mean? Um, but so if you are able to fly this ship and keep your enemy in your arc, mm -hmm. then on attack, you essentially have a target lock forever. Yeah. yeah. It's not a, a, a it's technical not target lock. But if you focus as you're acting. It's like having a free target lock. It's like a free target lock. Because if you roll blanks, you re-roll. Yeah. And if you don't, you already got the hit, so you don't need the target yeah, the lock. Yeah, the hits anyway. are the focus, and you can spend it, focus. It allows you to get that target lock benefit without, without having, having to spend action, take a target which lock, is right? super And good. have a lock on a specific ship. Yeah. Because you might also have a lock, mm -hmm. like, to be fair. Yeah. Uh, and the other side of this coin, unlike, you know, original Han, which is really the question where it's like, why would I run Ray when Han has a 360 attack that he can just reroll at will? And it's obviously a different ability, right? Mm -hmm. Ray can keep results. Han can't. Right. Um, so you range one, you roll like two damage. Han can't like keep the two and reroll the others. But this also works on defense. That's the real kicker. Um, it just immediately takes this ship and like launches at the stratosphere for fat builds, if you will. Sure. Because you just put like C3PO hey, on Don't call her. Ray fat. <laughs> fat Ray. Uh, <laughs> I call her Team MFA. Anyways, go ahead. Solar Ray. No. Uh, so you put C3PO on her. Okay. And then you roll and you guess a zero and you roll a blank. You get the evade. You get the evade, and, and then now you can reroll it. And roll into an evade. And roll and into an evade, and get double evade. Now, the trick with Ray, though, and this is the problem I had when I was starting to build for her, is that because you're wanting to keep her in arc, this new title makes a lot of sense. Yes. Being able to flip around. But if you're going to build a fat build, right, a sturdy, we need a new name for that. If you're going to build a longer lasting Falcon. Okay, turtle build. Turtle build. Uh, you're right here. You kind of, na <laughs> turtle. <laughs> Hashtag turtle. <laughs> Hashtag <laughs> turtle Ray. Anyways. Uh, you kind of want the original title, right? I, I don't think that you need the original title whenever you have these two things. I think it's a more offensive turtle build, is what I'm trying to say. Like, I think it's similar, Yeah. but you're able to maintain offensiveness. I'm, I'm just saying, I, uh, like, I like... Can we talk about Finn here as well? Okay, Because I feel like they... Pause, break in the system. Let's talk about the Finn crew popping up. Five cost for a crew slot. He's so rebel only. Five points is a lot of points for a crew. It is. Rebel only. When attacking with a primary weapon or defending, if the enemy ship is inside your firing arc, you may add a blank result to your roll. Now, when I first read this, I was like, what? What is this all about, right? So as long as they're in your arc, on offense or defense, you get an extra blank. So once again, this is rewarding good piloting by keeping them in your arc. Yes. And you get a blank, though, which is weird. You get a blank. So whenever you're adding a result to a, a roll, you actually add a die. A literal die. A literal die is so added to the... So then, if you maybe had Ray, who will pop right. back in here, uh, who, while they're in arc, can re-roll blanks, adding the blank is now really beneficial. So now, if you're in arc, you're essentially a four primary falcon. Which is great. And which is insane. you're probably at range three at this point. Like, early approach, right? Yeah. Having, like, a range three in my arc is re really easy. Super good. And so when that happens, I'm rolling four dice. I get an extra die on defense that I get to re-roll. That's pretty good. So it's great. That's great. And at range one, you roll in five, uh, four dice, and then you add the blank, and then you roll. Uh, but then on defense is where this is really gets really gets nuts. Yeah. So same thing. You have C3PO on her. You guess zero. You roll, and you roll the zero. You get an evade. You add a blank with Finn, and reroll both of the blanks. You can now get three you can evades. now get three evades with the Falcon. Well, and you probably statistically guess one. <clears throat> We'll see through PO. I mean, you have two dice at 50 50. Well, you have one dice. Oh, because you're adding the blank. You add the blank. Ah, that's hard. That could go real good or real bad. Well, if you roll one, you get an evade. It's fine. Yeah. It's not you as add ideal. Blank, then you re roll the blank and maybe get two. Yeah. That's still really strong. This is a much stronger uh, turtle build. <laughs> turtle build. Turtle build. <laughs> Correction. I'm going to keep turtle. censoring myself. So it's um, cool that Finn and Ray naturally work together like that. I think that the they're Falcon. super powerful together. Bread and butter. Um, you know what? I'm going to play this in the next three days. It's, I've been flying one, it's great. 
Um, let's go ahead and get to the last pilot, okay. and then we'll get to all the crew cards. Yep. Uh, we get the, the illustrious, the one. The, the old one. man. Han, or Han. So how are, gonna, how are we gonna di differentiate these Hans when we're talking about them? I think they're calling the original young Han. Okay. And young uh, Chewie, and young Cause whatever. Because you could say old Han, but it's young. It could be the old. I get it. Older I, they're, age. They're, they're calling the originals the, young. Okay. Because they're from the originals. Young, and young. And then yeah. these are just Han. This and is Chewie? Han. Han and Chewie. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so Han, nine pilot skill, 46 whopping points. That is. So we are now just to, for you know the math math whizzes at home. We are eight points more expensive than the resistance sympathizer. We are now three more points ahead of Ray. Nine pilot skill, which is the magical number. Uh, all the same upgrade slots, all the same stats, and here's his ability. You ready for this? I'm ready. When you're placed during the setup, or during setup, you can be placed anywhere in the play area beyond range three of enemy ships. So this ability is insane. Yeah, it's like I have. I'm just let's just do it, right? I set up here. You normally set up over there. Han's like, um, I think I want to start right here. How about well, that? I think it's more than that, but it's fine. More. Yeah, it's a little more. So let's just measure it out, right? All right. But like, it's insane. I have no idea if this or, ability is good. Or no, it's just, but it's insane. I have no idea if it's like, good at Han all. Han can literally start like this. Just turn in. Or like this, right? He's like the ultimate flanker. In theory. The weirdest part of that is that you're paying all these points for this Pilot Skill 9 Han. Game starts, which is cool. This is really fascinating. Then his ability is off. Yep. He's done his thing. He did his thing. But that's an immediate, like... It's weird. It is real weird. I have no idea how to quantify the value of this ability. Or... I don't even know what to say about it, other it, than, like... It's so cool. I fully expect to be playing in, like, an Open Series or a World Championship and just get dominated by a Han player who does something I don't understand. Which is not very hard to do. <laughs> Just silence. <laughs> silence. All right, so that's all the pilots. Uh, now we're going to talk about the upgrades and crew that come in the box that are particularly of interest to the YT-1300. And we're going to start, of course, with Ray. Uh, Two-cost crew, rebel only. At the start of the end phase, you can place a fo one of your token your ships. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. You may place one of your ship's focus tokens on this card. At the start of the combat phase, you may assign one of those sh tokens to your ship. So I actually ran a Kane and Biggs build at Worlds, and I was testing, because they had previewed this, with Ray for a little while. And I love this. I absolutely love this upgrade. Early on, you just fly down your side of the board, focus, put it on Ray, focus, put it on Ray, focus, put it on Ray. You get three or four focus on her. And then now you essentially are getting a bonus focus, bonus focus, any turn you want. And that is supremely it's, useful. It functions very similarly to multi crow but better. It's not, it's different. Better. I would not call it better. I'd call it better. Anyways, go ahead. Why is, why is it better? Just go ahead. Okay. Uh, because you can get, you can like K-turn and then get a focus. Mm -hmm. You can go over to Debris Cloud and get a focus. You can evade if you have someone that has an evade and focus. Uh, it just gives you a lot of options that yeah. you normally wouldn't have, which is super helpful. And I, I really like that because it's like, I can like K-turn or I can go over to Debris, get my focus still, and then if you don't use it, you just, just goes right back, back on it. <coughs> which is really good. I think it's a strong, <coughs> strong little two, two crew slot, and anytime your list um, inherently is really good with focus, I think she's great. As long as you play. have the crew slot for it. Yeah, and I, I actually think this crew will be seen far more out of not YT-1300s than YT-1300s. I think that's fair. All right, next up. Very interesting upgrade for the YT-1300 and the YT-2400. Only modification, it's limited, zero points. Your upgrade bar gains the illicit upgrade icon. Smuggling compartment, by the way. You may equip one additional modification upgrade that costs three or fewer squad points. So how cool is it that the rebels, the you know people that are against the man, now have the illicit slot? It is very cool. In a very limited way, right? Like of the course. ships with cargo slots can have illicit Until stuff. So we get to be inside. But um, and it's a modification that doesn't take up your modification slot ultimately. It does restrict you down to a three point. It makes sure you're not running the engine. Engine upgrade. Which is big. It is big. Uh, but I can easily see this being just fascinatingly fun uh, for any number of upgrades. I mean, even a glitter stem at the right on the right card. They're just adding this many cards into a faction that did not have access to them before yeah. changes things. Yeah, I mean, it would be like if we had like a TIE fighter that could have an astromech. Yeah. In like a limited way. It's like you just haven't had this option before in this faction, yeah. and now you get all these options. So I'm very curious to see what people do with that. 
Um, so speaking of that, we actually get a new illicit upgrade in a rebel ship, which is cool. Burnout Slam, you get two of these, it's one point, it's illicit, large ship only. Your action bar gains the slam action icon. Well, ain't that neat. After you perform a slam action, discard this card. <laughs> Would you look at that? That's cool. Uh, so I immediately think about this on Ray, mm -hmm. in theory, because you put it on her and then now she is in and out and still able to put you in arcs and get out of range or... Now once you slam though, you can't shoot. You right? can't shoot. So I can three bank and then three bank. That's a lot of movement. <laughs> With I mean, the big just, ship. Just to demonstrate. Here, starting point, three bank. I'm gonna go ahead and three bank this way now. Hold the ship down. It's like, you literally cross the whole board in like it's a big. single turn. And ultimately for one point, and uh, you get that access. Like you could even do that turn one, like. Yeah, I mean, get, I mean, imagine, imagine uh, Silly Han, we'll call him Silly Han. Old, old Han. Uh, no, Old Han doesn't make sense. That's right. He, he can just get wherever he wants. Like he can shoot that first shot and then run. He can just get behind. It's 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 madness. So it's I think that's a very cool. I'm excited to see the designs, future designs that kind of play off of that yeah. as well. That's limited ways to bring in these these cards. All right, another crew card, Hot Shot Copilot. You get one of these four points crew slot. When attacking with a primary weapon, the defender must spend one focus token if able. When defending, the the attacker must spend a focus token if able. So, so able just means they're attacking you with dice. Yeah. Like they don't have to have dice to switch. Mm -mm. It's just you have a focus token and you're attacking me. So a list that I saw running this card, it won the Omaha Regional this year. It was uh, Chirino in the Brianna Chirino in yeah, the Decimator the with that on it. And then Echo in a Phantom. And so what he was doing is he's attacking with Chirino Stripping, your stripping the focus, and then just blorg and schmorgan you with, with <laughs> Echo. Blorg and schmorgan. That's, uh, that's a hashtag if I've ever heard one. <laughs> but, so like, I think that this is an extremely powerful card. Yeah. That can... It's a lot of points, though. Yeah. I, I think it really rewards good list building and flying, though. It's a shame that Biggs doesn't have a crew slot. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Probably give him one. I think that's good. Yeah, why not give him one? Make him five less points? Whatever. Uh, all right, next up we have an EPT called Snapshot. It's two cost. It has a range of one. Two attack dice. After an enemy ship executes a maneuver, you may perform this attack against that ship. So if they execute a maneuver that ends in range one of you, you get to do this, which is attack. Attack one ship. You cannot modify your attack dice and cannot at attack again this phase. So it's just a free attack. During the movement phase. During the movement phase. Or if they somehow That's execute cool. maneuver outside movement. Yeah, true. Whatever that looks like. I'm, I'm sure that there's a card out there somewhere. I'm sure there will be one. Uh, um, it's fine. Or, you know, actually, um, yeah. Not being able to modify them hurts it a lot. Like, I think that if this is modifiable, it's immediately like, yeah, this is going to go on a lot of things. Yeah. But it's just a two, little two die. Uh, it's just more dice you can roll. And now after they execute maneuver, is that before they take actions? After they execute maneuver, you may perform attacking that ship. I'm not sure. Because uh, if they also don't get actions before you shoot, that could be pretty brutal. We'll check. If you know the answer, leave it uh, in the comments. That's a, I, I got a fuzzy question coming out in the middle of the video. That's, okay. that's how you get someone off guard. All right, last card we're going to talk about here is a zero cost EPT. Of course. Zero is now a point cost we're fighting over. When attacking, if the attack is obstructed, you may roll one additional attack die. Sure. Just put it on there. I mean, if you're not using your APT slot, this is great. Yeah, I mean, you will put it on there. I mean, if you, if, if you don't care about pilot skill, so you don't use adaptability, yeah. it's, sure. Well, and I think... I don't know that it's you cool build around this, this, this card, class though. of zero cost. It just fits in. <coughs> I mean, even if you think about the Falcon or anything with a, a 360, because this is not faction-specific, um, I know, you know, I, and Kanan doesn't have it, but Ren the Ghost with a big ship and the 360 turret, it's like... Very consistently, I'm wanting the attacks to be obstructed both ways. So I'll like move in a way where my corner's next to a, um, a debris, a debris or, or rock. rock. And then the attack is obstructed both ways, but getting the attack dice is great. It's good. Red dice are better than green dice, people. Well, most of the time. You know what I mean? Uh, anyways, so that's a large part of the upgrades here. We're going to now move over and talk about the T70 X-Wing. The T70. And With an updated... Uh, 
little paint scheme. Little, little paint scheme. Yeah, I was I, honestly. I'm gonna be. I'm just being honest here. Before we mm -hmm. dive in, I was a little disappointed. I was so disappointed. Not in the paint job. The paint job is great. Paint is great, but in the article, little BB-8 here is really BB-8. He's painted like BB-8. And then if you zoom in, uh, he's just not painted not. at all. It's okay. He's white. That's fine. It's not too hard to correct yourself, but yeah. it's it's still it was like, a little like I was kind of expecting. I was expecting. I, was like, it, I want and then to see BB-8, and then he wasn't there. So um, be aware <clears> if you're buying it that that's a thing that happened. Yeah. All right, so we are on the T70. Yep. The dial is the same as the original T70. All right. It's got one Banks and one Fords that are both green. Then it's got two, all of the twos, but the two Ford is green. It's got the three Talon roll, both directions. Money in the bank. And then all the normal threes and a three Ford normal. All right. And then it's got a four Ford and a four K. All right. So, so it's, pretty, it's pretty good dial. Talon roll is, bad. is where the magic happens. Um, it's also got a boost action built into it, which is worth noting whenever we get to this title that we're going to start with. Uh, so we have a title here that's the black one. It's a T70 X-Wing only. Uh, it's one point, and it says, after you perform a boost or barrel roll action, you may remove one enemy target lock from a friendly ship at range one. You cannot equip this card if your pilot skill is six or lower. So black one is Poe's title. Poe's title. Um, and effectively, boost or barrel roll, you get to drop a target lock off of your ship or another friendly ship at range one. It's pretty good. Pretty solid, especially in the age of the For defenders. one point, yeah, yeah. Uh, when you have the Riot adversary thing going on, they got all the target locks. You, you remember one target, target lock, lock, you get two target locks going? Yeah, mm. it's really strong. Um, um, of course, it's only going to go on an AC or pilot. Also really good against anyone that's running missiles. Yeah. And of course, you have the like BB-8 um, combo, where it's like, Ooh, uh, I did a barrel green, roll. I'm going to barrel roll, drop a lock, push the limit, get my thing. So in theory, with BB-8 and push the limit, mm -hmm. You could remove two target locks. Because you could boost and barrel roll. Because you could barrel roll, remove a target lock for BB-8. Boost. Move, push the limit, boost. Remove another green, target lock, do a green. Take and an focus. action. Yeah. It's a lot, a lot of magic happening there. I like it. I mean, I was looking at, um, put when I was building Ray, Rado. Rado. Uh, I was looking at a Poe like Ace to go with it. And Black One kept making it, not making it. I mean, it. it's, it's a card that gets cut. Ultimately, in a lot of lists, I think, it's like, oh, but yeah, I would love to have this. Definitely, it's a card if you're at 98 points, 99 points, you don't have anything to do. It's a great title. More than willing to put it in there. Yeah, on any of the, um, the T-70s that are worth, worthwhile. All right, we're going to start with the Blue Squadron Novice. Basics. This is a 24-point T-70 X-Wing. All right. It has a uh, torpedo slot. Mm -hmm. It's got an astromech slot, and it's got a tech slot. Standard T-70. Um, standard things. It's got focus, target lock, boost. Three attack, two agility, three hole, and three shields. Two pilot skill. Yep. So I can't. Nothing fancy. Yeah. Then we have the Red Squadron, who is a four pilot skill, all the same stuff, except for he's got an EPT, and he costs two more points. So two pilot skill and an EPT for two points. Mm -hmm. Then we're gonna go down in pilot skill. Oh man. To twenty five points. Uh, you lose the EPT. All right. It's a three pilot skill. Like I said, it's Jess Pava. Do we know who that is? I don't know who that is. But cool. I love this ability. What's the ability? When attacking or defending, you may reroll one of your dice for each other friendly ship at range one. Ah, very cool. So, so this he likes to fly in formation. Really good with like a triple X or list or something like that, I think could be really cool. Yeah, especially, I mean, I've seen the, one of the local players here flies triple X's a lot. And that's a really, that could, it's tough because it's like, it's the ship you think you can get rid of, but you can't early on. And the, the balance here is cool because. And it's like, do you want to attack him? You want him at the end, because then his ability is not fine. Right, but it's like, yeah. He's hardest to kill early. In Normally, theory. like, so if you had Poe, right, with a focus and his tokens, shooting him is, like, not that attractive. Mm -hmm. Because... It's not attractive at all. No, not Because it's like, I'm going to do, like, two damage, and then you're going to, like, one bank, and, and I get a shield back, it. and then one bank and get a shield back, yeah. and it's like I did nothing. Yeah. I wasted my time, but... This is another hard part. It's just like, ugh, yep. I don't want to deal with this. It's fine. Uh... I think uh, Jess is pretty good. It's a cool little pilot. Um, up next, we have Snap Wexley. Oh, Snap. See what we did there? <laughs> <laughs> uh, snap is 28 points All right. uh, from 25 of Jess. Uh, snap is a pilot skill six. And he says, after you execute a two, three, or four speed maneuver, All right. if you are not touching a ship, you may perform a free boost action. He also has an APT. So, um, that's interesting, man. It's pretty good. So you can always... A free, free actions can't be taken when you're stressed, right? Correct. So he you cannot perform actions when you're he stressed. He can't do the talent roll into a free boost. Correct. Um, yeah. But he can do a three bank 
and then do the free boost and then focus target lock with push limit. Yeah, so I mean, he can do the three, get the free boost, push there, mm -hmm. do green, and get an action. He already did the maneuver. Ah, uh, yes. This is different than BB-8. But it's inverse. Yeah, but I think it's very good. Yeah, I mean, uh, anytime you can get free actions in this game, I think is actions are never good. a bad Turns thing. Out. So essentially, you can boost and two actions every turn with this guy if you have push limit. All right, which is Seems not bad. Good. Especially because you have those two and three straights that are green. That's right. Up next, we have Neen Num. Hey, he's back. Uh, he's back again. I thought he was a B-wing guy. Uh, he has been before. Uh, he is 29 points. Is he still around skill in the seven. movie? Oh, he was floating around, wasn't he? Yep. Uh, pilot skill seven, 29 points. He's got an EPT. Right. And he says this ability, which I think is super cool. Uh, when super you receive cool. a stress token, right. if there's an enemy ship inside your firing arc at range one, you may discard that stress token. Interesting. So he likes to like turn around up behind people and then like shoot them. Yeah, Bye. or like, um, you know, the, the, so let's just pretend that there was a ship like this and you're here. The old like 4K. That's what I'm saying. But like even, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you just Bounce get up behind ships. them and bop. Or, you know, you have the, you have the talent roll, which is like you curve around a ship and you're next to it. It's really thematically cool. That's, I think that's really cool. <clears throat> um, I think it's hard, it's gonna be hard. To I'm line it up? I'm thinking about where I want that, right? And it's, it's just a free little benefit to drop a stress anytime that you're next to an enemy. Yeah, I think it's just one of those things that like, you can't count on it happening. You're not counting on it or building around it. But like, it just is. It is a thing that will happen sometimes that's gonna help you out while you have this pilot so, skill yeah. seven. It's, it's kind of how I feel about the Valen Ruder uh, yeah. ability where it's like, I'm not building to this, but I'm if just it, going to abuse it should the moment If arise. it works out, I'm gonna own it. 100%, cool. Well, I'm happy to see Nian all bouncing around. Yep, and then the final pilot of the pack is Say it the man po. himself. Say po, it ain't Poe. Poe Dameron. Uh, he's 33 points. All right. So you may be saying to yourself, we already have a Poe. Well, this he, one. He was 31 points, right? Yeah, he was 31 points. This one's 33 points. His pilot ability is the same, but he uh, went to flight school and uh, became a pilot skill nine. Yeah, and I mean, if we're just being real here, it's originally was designed without the movie context. You see the movie, and literally in like 12 seconds, he kills like eight or nine TIE fighters and 15 stormtroopers. Like, he's probably a nine. He's probably a nine, and he should be. I, I like that they did this. You give him a PS9, I think he is one of the nines. He should be a nine. You don't have to use your EPT to get him to a nine or a 10. And you still have an APD slot, you can now boost him to an 11, the, or you can put any number of grades. The biggest in. thing about this that I think is cool is that now you actually are okay with running BB-8. So you can push the limit BB-8 shenanigans. Yeah. Because I wanted to run BB-8 with Poe before, yeah, but, but it's, before, like, it's like he well, needed to be a 10. Yeah. Or he needed to be at least a 9, but... Yeah, which I like way better. I mean, R2 on him is cool, and it's really strong, it's if we're being honest. Um, or R5P8, either one's yeah, fine. Yeah, it's fine. But, uh, but you at least want to feel comfortable running BB-8 on yeah. Poe. And I think you now are. I agree. He can do all sorts of things. So that's all the pilots. That's all the pilots. Uh, PS9 Po, I think that's an important, it really is an important um, part of the rebel stratosphere, right? Like the, the thing that they can pin, the, the main factors of their whole faction, that's, he's now one of them. Yes. And he was. He was, but it was different. It, yeah. He was not quite as AC as you needed him to be. Yep. All right, what else we got? All right, we got the upgrades now. Upgrades. So we have a new astromech. Oh boy. I always love seeing new astromechs because they're always weird and do cool stuff. I typically, and people always do weird stuff with them. I typically don't like seeing astromechs because they just are like blank for me most of the time. Imperials. Like the last time I, <laughs> I guess I flew Biggs at Worlds and he had an astromech, but it was literally the cheap astromech that prevented him from dying. It wasn't yeah. like some cool thing I was doing. So this one mm -hmm. is M9G8. It's unique. Uh, it's three points and it says, when a ship you have locked is attacking, you may choose one attack die, the attacker must reroll that die. But then it also has a secondary ability that says okay. you can acquire target locks on other friendly ships. Oh, wow. So I can target lock you, and I can reroll your offense against me, or I can target lock my guys and reroll offense against you. That's really cool. Now, where this gets really cool, I think, Tell me I've more. put a little thought into this, I is I haven't. in the arc. So the arc has an astromech slot and a crew slot. Okay. So there's a crew that you might not remember called the Weapons Engineer. Don't. No. It lets you maintain two target locks. One on you, one on them. 
One on you, one on them. That's pretty strong. And uh, you know, those early turns of the game, when you're going sideways or barely up the board, your actions are usually wasted anyway. So in that case, you target like your own ship, and now you're getting some serious offensive juice. It's cool. I think it's really neat. Very cool. Happy to see that. Up next, Way to go we have the Primed Thrusters. It's cool looking art. This is a tech card. It's one point. I, it's small I ship I want only. to see way more tech cards. I think that is a slot that I would love to see more evolved. Yeah, anyway, I, I mean, it will. It's the newest slot we have. Yeah. Like, it's it's going to go there. Um, it's one point. It's small ship only. And it says, stress tokens do not prevent you from performing boost or barrel roll actions unless you have three or more stress tokens. That is awesome. So this goes on the T-70 or the... Uh, the first order TIE fighter. That is super cool. Yep. So it's just like, oh, I'm I have a point to spare, and now I don't care about stress for boosts. Which is awesome. Or barrels. Or barrels. Yeah, and you have those weird scenarios, right, where it's like, even in the picture of the end game, right, with this and like Poe or anybody, but like you need to do the K turn or the talent roll. Yep. But you also want to reposition. Mm-hmm. Well, that's incredible. I'm gonna exactly do a talent roll and then boost. That's in, that's surprisingly good. It's it's better than it looks. And that can also go on the, it looks uh, pretty the old TIE SF, right? Um, I'm not sure. I've never flown a TIE SF. That, what, no, it goes on a TIE FO. TIE FO, that's what I meant. That's what I said a little bit ago. Oh, well, <laughs> you have to catch me up. I'm not watching um, the video. <laughs> I haven't watched it yet, so I'm not familiar. Uh, and then next we have the pattern analyzer. We get two copies of it. A little meta going on there. I get it. It's <laughs> real funny. Real funny. Yeah, you want to uh, laugh, you just have to read. Anyways, go ahead. It's the pattern analyzer. Yep. It's another tech slot. Yay, more tech. It's two points. And it says, when executing, executing a maneuver, you may resolve the check pilot stress step after the perform action step. All instead right. of before that step. So go ahead and rolls guru me. What does this mean? So the way it works is you do a maneuver, you choose the dial, you then reveal the dial, and then you put the template down, and then you move. Okay, so it's 4K. Bop, bop. And then bah. the next step would be check pilot stress. If you did a red maneuver, you add a stress. If you did a green maneuver, you take one off. So I basically had to take an action before I put that stress on. Correct. And it does it say you may? When executing a maneuver, you may resolve the check pilot's Okay, step. cool. So it's not you have to, because that'd be <laughs> weird, because then you don't clear from a green either until... Yeah. No, it's... You may. And so it's... Interesting. It's interesting. It's so, two points to let you take actions after turning around or... And it's a tech slot, right? So, like, you know, you do your, uh, your talent roll this way, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't do this very often. <laughs> uh, and you normally get a stress immediately, but now you can, like, focus with Poe mm -hmm. and then get the stress. Yeah, which can be very powerful. It's huge because then you can take a green. Do the it's loop it reverse. It's the it. kind of thing on Poe that loses him games before this card exists. Like, he, he doesn't have an out there. Right. He needs to turn he, around. But every he does, he's going to focus. Every three turns, he turns around and he is taking a turn without an action, which is vulnerability. Which is whenever he loses. Yeah. But now with this card, he doesn't lose. He doesn't. He, he, he loses. Just keeps, keeps turning. But it's well. You have to basically. That's why I think R two is so popular on him. Yep. To build up your shields so that on those turns, even yeah. if you take some damage, mm -hmm. you're not like lethal. But now you can build up those shields with R2, turn around and focus still. Or you can just BB-8 and never take the damage. Whoa. Whoa. All right, what else? What uh, else and then the final two cards of the pack are two copies of Integrated Astromech. Hey, more the one Integrated we, Astromech. The one we've always known and loved. That's uh, actually really good. X-Wing only modification, zero points. When you're a Delta Damage card, you may discard one of your Astromech upgrade cards to discard that damage card without resolving its effect. Very cool. So, so it's like a zero point hole upgrade, but worse. That's integrated astromech. Yeah. We've all been there. Um, so this box is really good. Across it's the awesome. Board. It's super thematic. It's super Part fun. One. And it's good. Well, I think that was kind of where I was going with it, which is if you're newer to X-Wing and you're looking to get in and you want to play Rebels, historically it was like you need a starter and then like uh, Rebel, what's it called? There's Imperial Veterans, Rebel, Rebel Aces. Aces. Imperial Aces also existed. Rebel Aces. Uh, is a nice little box pickup, A wing, B wing kind of a thing. This is actually the next stop now. I agree. Like this is immediately starter, and then this box because not only do you get uh, a Falcon and the. I mean, I think that there is a good 100 point list in this box. In this box, it's the Falcon and Poe, right? Right. Like, I mean, <laughs> or any of the X wings. Right, right. But you have an Astromech. You get a tech slot. You have the integrated Astromech. You have the Falcon build that's great. And more than all of that is that instead of just like a B wing and an A wing that are cool and all the stuff, which is a great box, that's the next stop after this. Uh, you have Finn and Poe and Ray right. and Han and, and Chewie. Chewie. It's just and all of these know. names that you recognize and it's like, oh, this is cool. Yeah, this is a remarkably good box and it's a great value. You get a ton of cards, both ships that look incredible. So 
Two thumbs up. Two thumbs up to the design and the making of this box. Highly recommended. Uh, favorite card from the box before we get out of here? Uh, my favorite card from the box is easily, without a doubt, Han Solo. Just because he's so interesting. Just because it's so cool. Yeah. It's so low cool. Uh, so low cool. You should, if you'd nailed that on the first, first go. Uh, I think mine is, I think the card I will use the most is the Ray Crew. I, that wasn't the question. I know. I'm just answering okay. an answer. You're answering your own question my, that you didn't ask. My, <laughs> <fair. laughs> hey, I make the rules, all right? What, what do you want from me? Uh, I think my favorite card in the box, as I'm just making sure, reading through here, um, I like the Ray Pilot. Ray Pilot's really cool. That's the one I think I'll have the most fun with, but then when it comes down to nuts and bolts, tournament time, if I ever run Rebels again, Dirty Rebels, uh, I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. But if I do, uh, the Ray crew will probably be in said list. So thank you guys so much for watching. We have plenty more coming for Star Wars X-Wing. Again, if you haven't checked out the Awakened Alliance templates and tokens, full range of all the squad products that we have, do that. Uh, as always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your purchases. You allow us to do what we do, and we will catch you on our next X-Wing video. See you guys.